My name is Yad Ahmed Bulle. I'm the Somali Community Chairman Assistant in the Moines. Okay. My name is Abdallah Mohsin. I'm one of the New Moines residents and a member of the Somali community. Okay. Okay. So the question is, is there any change you would make in immigration law? Yes, I uh, will not make any change, but we will request the government to try and consider people who are illiterate when trying to examine them or to test them for the civic and American law. These people are not even, they have never gone to the school even back in their country. They are expected to be English literate in a short time. They have never been to their school while they were there due to the civil war. Coming here, it is a new life, a new language, a new culture. That is very hard for the even literate people to catch up in a short time. And the U.S. government are trying to put the literate and the illiterate generations together and do the same tests. They expect them to be literate, to write the te uh, uh, to be literate in English, and to be able to write and speak in a short time, which is not even evident. There is no schools that really teach the adult people who come into U.S. as immigrants or refugees in a short time that they could really make them or be able for them to pass these tests. And that one has really uh, put a lot of pressure on the Somali elders who come here as refugees, and they are really frustrated about the test. How will they manage to do this? Uh, how much time do they allow, and how much time should they allow? Well. That one will depend on the government, but the thing we request is a longer time of durations that they can keep their green cards to be able to apply for the citizenship. Because the citizenship requirements, one of them is to be literate in English, be able to write and speak. These people have never been to school while they were young, back in Somalia. Coming here now, they need to start everything from ground zero to be able to write a sentence, to be able to speak and be fluent in English, and then to learn all the American history from the day America got independence to today, which is a new thing, which is a new system and a new culture. And right now, due, uh, according to the Homeland Security and the US uh, laws, they are expected to learn all this and be able to be approved as a citizenship within four or five years. And if they cannot? And if they cannot, if they have been getting SSI or Social Security benefits, that is cut off because they are being told you have been here more than six to seven years and you are not yet a U.S. citizen. Or do, do they, Due lose, to the, that, do they are, lose their green card also? They don't lose their green card. Although they have also problems in reapplying to renew the green cards itself, they need to go through many things. They have to go and look for people who are able to file for them and appeal for them to get the green cards themselves. Mm. To find a lawyer. A lawyer to do that. It is an expense. They are refugees. The work they are doing are the basic jobs in USA. That pays the minimum wage rate. If they have a family of 9 to 10, which is according to the Somali culture and families, is the average number of family, uh, of family members that we normally have in Somali communities. Five to six children. He is not literate, the mom is not literate. What they do work is like cleaning at night where they are paid $7.50. Where do they expect them to employ a lawyer <laughs> to get them green cards and also to appeal for their citizenship. How much does a lawyer cost an hour? 50 to 100. No, at least 200. At yes. least 200, yes, sir. 200, 200. Yeah, immigration, 220. Yes. Hmm. I'm sorry. 
which is just too expensive. Those are some of the things that we will request the government to consider. So another thing that would help would be if the immigration forms were simple enough that you could fill them out without a lawyer. That would have been wonderful. <laughs> and if it is possible, if the government would have allowed the forms to be also translated into Somali language, mm. it is something that we would have really asked them to do and also, also have the uh, audible CDs in Somali language. It is something which we would have requested. Now, uh, translation is something which so Somali volunteers could do. Is, yes. there, is there any difficulty with uh, getting the forms so that they could do that? Yes, the because make it the first thing is for the government to approve mm -hmm. and allow that to be done. It's according to the law. And it's the government you themselves. Mean, you mean the law does not allow volunteers to translate it for Somalis? I doubt, because when you go for the test right now, we are expected to do everything in English. No translators are even allowed. I personally have gone with other Somali people who do not speak English to these tests, and I've been stopped outside, and I'm told you are not supposed to come in with these people. And these are, are the people who the, cannot even write their names. Are you talking about the citizenship? Yes, yes. the citizenship. Okay, yes. but I'm talking about the, the forms that you say that you need to reapply for the green card. Yes, all those forms I'm saying, including the green cards, citizenships, and even applying for a work permit in case people came in a wrong way. But all the refugees I know can have the work permit immediately. So, so even they those no forms, problems. you cannot translate them? We don't have the authority and we don't know whether it is even allowed to be translated in Somali because every every notice that comes from United States citizenship uh, asks you to interpret or translate even if you have a foreign passport or a foreign, any letter that comes from a foreign country should be translated into English. Now, for people who have never gone to English class, or even a Somali English, uh, I mean school, which have, they have never even done even alphabetical class, what do you expect them to do? And then they are told you come for this, for the, to the Homeland Security Office to be tested, to be interviewed. She is not able to go to a store and buy a, a pint of milk because he doesn't know how much it is. The only thing they can do is to get the item they need and give the money they have. Whatever change they will be given is what they go with. However it is less, however it is deducted or even given less or more, they will go with what they have. That's how they are surviving. We don't have the resource to make sure that there are people who will really orient them and make sure that these people are able to live in the society. The agencies who are bringing over the refugees are people who are able, because of what they got from the government, because of the grants, their main issue is to make sure that these people fled to USA. They are here. The first thing they will do for them is to help them acquire, require, get the social security, get to the, where they can live, whether that house is full, of uh, uh, cockroaches or not, it's, their, it's not their job. Put for them a basic thing there for them to live. Show them this way you're gonna live, and leave them. They will not care how this family who just came, who has never been to any class or even to an urban center, can be able to live. They don't want it. Because that's their last part. Uh, if, if you had sponsors, uh, like so, uh, Somalis who have become citizens, then they could help with that. Thank you, sir. Yes, that's what you said. If you can say that, yes, Somalis who are citizens here in themselves in the USA who have been here 10 to eight, 9 years have got their own families to take care of. They have their own bills to pay, which they have never been used to. They did not bring any new family. It is a new agency. It is Lutheran services, it is the Catholics who are getting the money and the grants from the government and who are taking this from the government because they are resettling the refugees. 
if they are ready to pay the refugees or the Somalis who are already citizens, the Somalis who are citizens are ready and well prepared to help them. But if everything that would have come due to the refugees is coming through a different hand, and these people do not want to share or even give them an opportunity to do that work, well, the citizen need their bills to be paid and they have to look for what to do, not to take care of the refugees. They were not brought here to look for the other refugees, no. Yes, they can do, but the thing is, who will let them do? Uh, <clears throat> do you mean even, even citizens who want to help are not able to help because the Lutheran Social Services does not let them? They will not let them. That's weird. Yes, sir. And also the, the citizens themselves need something, at least to help these people too. They need their bills to be paid. So what do they need to do? They have to work. But if they are not given the opportunity to work with the resettlement agencies, how will they help? It's very hard. Do you know how many Somali refugees come? Most, most come by refugee status, right? Yes, sir. Okay. yes sir. Do you know how many Somali refugees were admitted every year? Every year, no. I cannot know. That is a very big agencies in USA that come together. There are about 51 agencies, I don't know. Making booklets. Yes, yeah, all the, in the 50 states. Yeah. And in the 50 states, they take according to their budgets. Every state have got different categories, and also the allotment is by the U.S. United States government. Who will allow them? A refugee, uh, refugees are supposed to, theoretically, our law lets anyone who is a refugee, meaning someone who is in danger if they stay in the country, yes. lets all refugees come. Is that true? Are there Somalis who are uh, desperately need to come here that are not allowed because there's too many? Uh, yes, sir, because there was too many, and also wherever they're heading to, needs to make sure that they are able to support them wherever they're going. So it is not easy if they are to let all the refugees come over, because every state have got a, limit, a limited budget. The agencies who are bringing them needs to board a flight or a plane to bring them over. All those expenses need to be considered before just letting the refugees come in. We know of the Somali refugees who are back in the refugee camps are disparate and in need of a lot of help, humanitarian help. But it is the limited number or the budget that is forcing the other refugees to be suffering in their camp. Is it only the budget, or is there also a numerical limit? There's also a numerical limit, according to the government, which government needs how much. I'm sorry, did you say there is a limit, or it's not? There is no limit to the refugees. They are there. Okay. But what I cannot say is what limit do the U.S. government allow, or the Australian government allow, or the Canadian government allow? Mm -hmm. Those are the governments which normally take the refugees, and it is there. Homeland Security, who normally gives the number of refugees they expect them to resettle in USA for this year to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR. Those are the people who will interview these people and hand them over to the Homeland Security to re-interview them and make sure they are security-wise, legal, and they are good and they are clean to come over to USA. So that's why I'm telling you I'm not sure whether there's a limit or there's no limit. I cannot talk about that. No. Okay. Yes. Do you have any other thoughts about what you'd like to see in different in, with the immigration process? Well, except that languages, I will say... And the waiver. The oldest one day... I don't want to be... Oh, you're trying to record. It's okay. You can record. It's fine. Yes. Okay. Waiver, yeah. That's what waiver, Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Talk about it. I can start. So, start it. Okay. Are you going to put on somewhere off the TV or are you just skipping? It's going to be on news? Probably YouTube. YouTube? Oh my God. <laughs> Go ahead. No problem. Okay. That's Manana, the chair lady of yeah. Somali Community in Demons, yep. Iowa. My name is Manana Asman.
So I'm the chair lady at Somali community in Des Moines. I've been here almost 17 years in Des Moines, Iowa. Well, I started coming here, I was really young, 13 in age. When we came here, it was third refugee, no one was here to help us. We had the same problem Siad was talking about early, like Lutheran Social Services was supporting just 90 days. Then my parents, they don't know where to start after 90 days. So we have to struggle. Finally, we found our way. And right now, I'm here to support my community, Somalian leaders. I'm ready to help. Oh, one thing I'm asking for the um, immigration, there's a Olders, when they apply their citizen and they don't speak the language, especially they're over 65 years old, they have a limit seven, seven to six years for a green card, otherwise, they're going to lose their disability. And they have to pay bills. They pay, they never pay bill back home. Right now, they have to pay phones and, and they, everything. And they, and they can't get jobs? They can't get jobs because they're disabled. They can't get jobs. They're, the orders are disabled, so it's a social security SSI. So they can get the job. Well, the doctors say you cannot work when, we don't, when you don't have citizenship and you can't get SSI. So that's really hard. So there's one thing I can ask for the immigration for the waiver to apply, and they don't cover by Medicaid. So you have to pay $500 cash. So you have to come up with $500. If you don't have the money, like if orders don't have the money, how can they apply that waiver for them to wait for interview, their citizenship. The pro problem I see is that, well, do you, are there any pla places where you can talk with uh, people who are working on immigration law to to tell them these your the, these problems and ask them to tell the senators to uh, to, to consider. Well, there is no particular place that we know of right now. Uh, if it if it will be yes, it could be at the Capitol building where we might be able to face the senators or the representatives and to take our voice forward to either White House. Parliament or to the senators, but there is no particular place that we know we can go and talk about the refugees and what problems they are facing, so that they can be helped. No. There are uh, there are groups and people and individuals here in Iowa who are uh, talking to senators and congressmen and trying to urge them to pass immigration reform. But I don't know of any groups that are talking about the details that ought to be in immigration reform. Yes, sir. that's one thing also which I cannot really say at the moment. We have also applied, we have also supported some of the bills to be taken to White House as the community, community as refugees here in, so, here in Des Moines, asking our senators to support, like the school budget, in Des Moines. But there is nothing else that we know of and there's nothing we can do. And we don't know the individuals that you're telling me are trying to support or even writing to the senators to help them pass some laws according to the refugees. I am not aware of those, yes. Like uh, here we are refugees. We come to be citizen here. We are being admitted. We're living in the United States now. You're talking about the immigration reform. Most of the refugees, they don't even know the immigration law. They don't even understand. Yeah. You're talking about passing the law. This law, we don't have say on it, because we don't know. What can we say about it? Right now you're saying there's a group trying to pass the immigration reform. We don't know what the reform is. We don't even know the immigration laws. So, so when the refugees came here, they are just being sent to the ESL school to learn just basic English and they go straight to work. Yet nobody, no agency even is telling them, even is teaching them, yeah, or trying to understand, make them to understand the immigration law. Even the basic immigration law, they don't even understand. They are even afraid when they come to, the, to fill in the document even by themselves. They don't even trust themselves. 
May I ask you some? Uh, one of the reasons that a lot of citizens don't want to allow any more immigrants to come is because they think that when immigrants come and take a job, they'll take it away from a citizen. Uh, I don't think that's true, but what do you think? I don't think that's true. Refugees come here with a limited education. If there is anything, it's jobs that demand for them that they are acquiring, and they are trying to get only the minimum paying jobs. Now I doubt if there is any refugee who is in the position of taking the jobs from the citizens. I don't deny, after some 10, 20 years, there are children of the refugees who are already citizens because they were born either in the USA or they came here while they were young and acquired the education could be able to compete with the citizens. I don't deny that, because this is a land of opportunity, and that's what we expect. But there's no refugee who comes to USA and who will be able to get a job from the citizens, I doubt. That is it. Another reason that many citizens don't want more refugees or immigrants is because they think that we will have too many people. Uh, we cannot have too great a population. If the population explodes, why? We won't have enough land. We won't be able to grow enough food. United States have 50 states. I don't, I don't believe that. But do you believe that? I don't believe that because the land is just too much. And there is enough resources in USA for everybody who comes to USA. And even the government, USA government or Homeland Security, will not allow any refugees to be brought in without them knowing there is a place for them. And that is how they work with the VOLAC or the agencies who are resettling refugees from different countries. So I don't believe in that. That's not true. If the government would allow uh, any anyone to come that ha that could find a sponsor uh, would that be a good idea and suppose like if if uh, if you knew someone that wanted to come from Somalia and you were willing to be a sponsor you would agree to uh, help not, not not pay their bills but show them how to how to, how to find a job Yes, uh, yes, how, absolutely, how to yes. Home, explain how light switches work. Yes, and... I will be ready to do that, yes. <laughs> that's what we are doing. And that's already. what we are doing, that's and that's what what, doing. why this office is opened. Yeah. And that's why we brought the, the community in Demons together to make sure that we have somewhere yeah. that we can rely on. In case somebody is evicted from the house, they even don't know the process and where to go and how to start. So what would you think what? if the government allowed everyone to come from Somalia who could, if there was a sponsor? Well, to let everybody from Somalia to come over is not what I will say because in Somalia, currently, we have so many things going on. And if at all anybody in danger due to the civil war going on who are not able to do anything for themselves, will be allowed, I will appreciate. Uh, what do you mean by not able to do anything for themselves? Because they are in danger, they cannot fight back. Due to many uh, political and other groups like Al-Qaeda and Al-Shabaab, which we have never had before, come, came to Somalia, according to what we are hearing and we are seeing in the mm -hmm. news, I will not say USA should let everybody in Somalia to come here, no. Because mean, they have because to go. Some, you mean because some of them are violent? Yes, some of them are violent. Okay. Some of them are not good in security wise. Due to that, I will say let them interview them the way they have been doing, and if they are security wise clean, I will appreciate if the USA government will let all the Somali refugees who are today not even in their country, but in the countries beside them, like in Dadaab, in Kakuma, 
in Uganda na Kivale refugee camps, if they could let just those refugees in the camps, it is like they are being dumped there and they have no right even to go out and they have no even opportunities. They are not given the opportunity to go and work for themselves. And I know they are suffering. If at all those people were given the first priority, and if the government will be able to resettle them in USA, I will appreciate yes. Because I know they are in their, in their uh, problems and they are really in need. They really need a lot of things. If the government wanted to uh, expand uh, their interviews, interview, allow more people to come, but do background checks to find out who's going to yes. who's going to be violent, who's going to be peaceful. Yes. Uh, are there ways that the government could do a better job or an easier job, or is there ways that volunteers could help do the background checks? Yes. Yes. If the government will allow the Somali citizens, because they do understand these people's language, they do understand their culture, they can differentiate who is who. If the government will allow them and work along with the Somali citizens who are already here for some years, that could really give them an opportunity to be easier and also to be able to get who, are, who will be clean, actually. Yes, that would be good. Mm. Yes, sir. So, I have to ask, what reforms are you trying to pass now? What am I trying to or pass what now? Changes? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the changes in the immigration. What I would like is to have people that care about immigration to come and talk about what they want. Okay. There are... The organists, right now, what we have is uh, groups that, like lawyers and other groups, that say they want immigration reform. I they'll, understand. They'll say, they'll write a page, a page, one page, explaining what they want immigration law to do. They, then, they, then they elect senators to, Stand uh, for to, that. to write this one page into a law, and the senators write... 1,200 pages of laws to explain, to give details to this one page. Okay. And so uh, it should not surprise us when some of those details are scary. And so I see the need for, uh, for people who care about immigration reform to talk about the details of what they want to happen and how it could be done so that it is not bad for citizens and it's not bad for refugees. Yes, that's a good idea. Can we organize then a forum and we bring all the refugees and okay. the immigrants and they talk about their problems? Yeah. And then we write what we think, what we think. would be good for the refugees. Mm -hmm. If that would have been allowed, yes. But since they are not citizens, do they have a voice? Do they have a voice in the Senate? The, That's the question. The, the, uh, they don't, yes. they don't have. <laughs> yes, as they don't they have, have a voice? voice to vote. Yes, but they do have a voice to explain the problems, and because the the people who do vote don't really want laws that are going to hurt refugees. Okay. And if they can be made to understand that these laws hurt refugees. That's one thing people don't understand. Yes, yeah. you're right, yeah. So that would be very nice. And if at all, the government would really consider a lot of problems and listen to the refugees and know what's going on and what agencies are really taking care of the refugees and to how long and longer duration to be given for the agencies to continue taking care of the refugees who just arrived in the country would have been a great thing to do. Because we know there are refugees who come here, they are elders, they have no, maybe they are single mothers whose husbands died, who were trauma, traumatized back due to the civil war, who witnessed killings. Coming here after 90 days, the way just my colleagues said, they are being told you are left on your own. They speak no language. They have no means of transportation. 
They don't know how to get along. And the agencies just leave them where they are. They are not even able to talk to their landlords in case they have any problems. If at all those laws could be modified and a longer length of time could be given to the agencies to take care of the refugees who just arrived, we would appreciate. And if at all, the government will let the refugees have their voice being heard in a way even though we know we, they have no right to vote, but in what way could they always make their voices and their problems be known to the government, including to the city councils, to the governors, and from there, yes, to the White House, if I could say. How would they get that voice? We cannot say they should be allowed to get an office, a representative, in the state, we don't have that. We don't have that really power or that thing. But how can we get that? 200 years ago, when America was founded, yes, sir. it took two to five years of waiting before you could be a citizen. You're right. Now, <laughs> it's, five uh, years. it's five years for five a refugee, years. Yes. if you can learn English, and for... People who are not refugees is anywhere between 12 and 40. 40, years. yes, you're right, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. But there's some of them, you don't have to be here five years. Like my sister, she applied K visa, you call um, K visa for a petitioner. I don't know, I don't think it's petitioner. Petition, yeah. Petition, yeah, K visa. She was already a citizen. She that's was already right. a citizen. Yes. That's then right. her husband became a citizen after three years. That one is there, yes. Yeah. So he doesn't have to wait for five years. But he can't get no benefit from the state. No food stamp, no medical, anything. Nothing. Nothing. Until three years. Now, another objection that a lot of citizens have to, to allowing more immigrants is that if they are on welfare, it'll, it'll take too much money and there isn't enough money. Now, I'm hopeful that there is a way to allow uh, immigrants to come who, and, and if there's enough who are working, can, who, can, who can help those who are in need without welfare. I'm not saying to do away with the welfare there is, but in order to allow more to come, uh, there should be a way to do it without the welfare. Well, it will be very hard to do away with the welfare. Because imagine you as a refugee fled from your country. You have been a refugee camp where you are restricted to stay in that refugee camp. These people are traumatized. They speak no language. You are brought to a country where you don't know their language, where you don't know the way of life, how to go about. How do you expect those people to live if they were just allowed to come into the USA and they are left by their own? It is very hard for those people to survive. It would be rather for them to stay where they were because they know how to get their own ways. If the welfare is not there, well, it is very hard for refugees to survive in USA. That's what can never be possible, yes. Are there laws that could be changed to make it easier for people to work? That, as far as refugees are concerned, we are very appreciative to the government. We have never had any problems with obtaining a job, despite the fact that most of the refugees from my country, Somalia, did speak very little English. If it were not for the language barrier, the minute we come, to U.S. port airport that we come in, we are being given the work permit immediately. Mm -hmm. That has no time or no extension. Once you are given that, you can work anywhere in USA, and we appreciate USA for that. Isn't there a five-year limit? No. No, that's there not. is like no. two years limit. The there is two years limit. After that, once you get a green card. I-94. I-94, yes. What, what were you yes. going to say? Yeah, like, uh, like the first question you ask, you ask like, is it uh, any way that the refugee citizen 
can help other refugees. Yes, we can do. We can help them if the government make, mm -hmm. make possible the law that yes. a refugee citizen can sponsor other refugee to come here yes. for the period of time. Like even the agency themselves, they can hold for three months, 90 days. We can hold maybe extend with them like six months. Six months individual sponsors. You can get them from the community. Good with individual sponsors. Do That's the government okay. allow the refugees themselves to sponsor other refugees? Not, not part of their family members? So, uh, say that again. So you're saying that the law should allow refugees to sponsor other refugees? Yes. Instead of just citizens? Yes. And by sponsor, you mean to help take care of them also? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's right. Right now, we can't do that, can we? We can't do that. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying. But there are individuals voices. who are able to do. Uh -huh. Not all, all the people can do it. But yeah. there are individual, well, individual, individuals. You probably have relatives and friends and families that yes. can't come. Yes, yes. A lot. And I'm not, uh, the law doesn't allow a me. A lot? Yeah. Yes, but Especially the law cannot kids. allow me. I can vote. The, I, I can have vote. my parents in the refugee camps, right now. I have my own parents in the refugee camps, whom I am willing or wishing to bring them over, but I cannot, because of what he just said. And if you brought because them over, and if you brought them over, you could take care of them without welfare. Oh, yeah. Yes, I can. Okay. At the moment, I can. Yes. Work eight hours. Yes, sir. I can work. I have my brother there, would you come? I want to bring him, but he's above the age. And he's he's, above, he's above 18, and I'm not allowed to sponsor him, to bring him. Yeah. If so they don't make it easier other, yeah. for you to bring your brother, your cousin, Maybe other or refugees, your own other, other needy refugees. refugees, the refugee citizen, the or refugee orphan kids citizen are willing to help. Yes, they are them. willing to. Yeah, or orphan But children. even right now, you cannot even, or you are not even able to petition for your immediate brother or family member unless you become a citizen. That's the only time you can stand and say, yes, I can do this now. Mm -hmm. So due to that, it's taking so long time. By the time you get to be a citizen, all your... Friends and family are died of old age. Are all dead, yeah. or anything might have happened. You are right. <laughs> so it is very hard. So due to that, as he said, yes, if refugees could be allowed or given an opportunity to let other refugees come in, of which is not just coming in, but for the government to make sure they do the background check and make sure those people were clean. And yes, so and so you can bring in your brother for two months, you can feed, you can for three meals. months. Help him, like yes. three months, four months, the expenses. And if I, I will take care of the medical, medical, medical cost also for that time. So that will be good. Hmm. If at all, our voices are to be heard, yes. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? So uh, this, this reform you are, trying, you are trying to pass, we need our voice to be heard. <laughs> How will you yes. present to White House? Well, if we could find people that would meet together, uh, like with Mexicans. Okay, and with other nationals. Yeah. yeah. I understand what you mean, yes. And, and, and then if we could agree, discuss how we want the law changed and agree, then we can invite a Senate candidate yes, to come to our meeting okay. and, and turn the camera on and we can ask him questions and we can tell him what we know, what we've experienced, okay. what we believe would work, and, uh, and, and he would have to think about what we say because he wants to get voted and because we know people who can vote. That will be good, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That will be very good. We will try to contact our refugee, other nationals committees around, and when Kenyan we will students. be able. What is it? I say Kenyan, Sudan. Yes, Kenyan, Sudan, Liberian, Sudan, Ethiopia. The all the, all the immigrant communities. Yes, if they could come together and be one voice, that's what yes. I say. We can organize them and bring them together. With yeah. one voice? No, you understand, it's difficult. Yes, it's to very get, hard, I know. To get human beings to agree on anything. It's very hard. It, it is. is. It is. It is not easy. But...
But yes, if we can't, if, if we the care, if we who care about immigration can't agree or can't even meet to even talk about what we want, right, yeah. how do we expect lawmakers to give us what we want? That's very hard. To if we right. can't decide what we want, how are they going <laughs> to figure it out? It's very hard. Yeah. <laughs> if we are the ones who are in need and we are not able to come together, you are very right. It is not easy for them to present or know our problems. Yeah.